founder of Vanguard and the first index fund, Jack Bogle, noted that investing is not nearly as difficult as it looks where successful investing involves doing a few things right and avoiding serious mistakes. And this is the best quote I could relate to for the Roth IRA because with the three index funds I'm about to show you in this video, you're going to be able to get all the exposure you would need to build wealth over time while reducing risk of any serious mistakes. Of course, I'm not a financial advisor, but just a quick breakdown on what the Roth IRA is, it's pretty much our retirement account where you pay taxes on the money up front that you contribute into the account, where you can't then invest in the account. However you want at the age of retirement that is 595 and above, you can withdraw anything from the account completely tax-free, assuming you meet the five-year rule, which for most of you, this shouldn't be an issue. And so with the Roth IRA, you have the option to control this entire account and invest however you want inside of it and form, I personally only use index funds, so if you don't know what index funds are they. You're pretty much a way to invest the 200 hundreds to event thousands of companies all within one purchases. So knowing that, to get straight to it, the first index fund, I believe is a need in the Roth The Ray. The Ray is a total stock market index fund where one of the most popular options out there that is an ETF that you can purchase on nearly any platform would be through Vanguard's, which is the total stock market ETF with a ticker V to now ETF trade similar to individual stocks. So if you've ever bought, let's say, Apple, you would be a part owner of Apple and you would own the higher stock where if you were to instead buy an ETF like V, you would get exposure to 3,656 stocks all within that one purchase. And this is because the fund tracks the CRESP US total market index, and that means you're getting exposed to large mid and small cap stocks across growth and value styles. Now, this fund is market cap weighted, which means of the 3,656 stocks that are inside of this fund, they're going to be given weight based on the size of the companies that are inside of the fund. For example, you can see see the top 10 holdings right here where the largest ones are Apple, Microsoft, and NVIDIA, each one's between roughly 5 to 6 cents, which makes sense because they are currently the three largest companies by market cap in the U.S., so by bundling up all these stocks that are inside of ETI and you purchase this one fund, that means that these sectors inside of this fund would include technology at 33.3 cents of the fund, then consumer discretionary at 13.5 cents. Industrial set 12.7 and financial and healthcare thereafter, there are many benefits to investing into a diversified fund like this that tracks many different market sectors within the U.S. But best of all, lift, the U.S. economy continues to grow. A willier investment, for example, with this fund over the past 10 years, it has averaged a 12.78 cent annual return, whereas since 2001, that average is 8.87 a cent. And just so you know, that includes any exp. And set that comes along with this fund was also referred to as the expense ratio, and for VIF that number is 0.3 cent. But besides ETFs, you could also look into index mutual funds within the brokerage that you're investing on, such as Fidelity, Vanguard, or Charles Schwab. Now index mutual funds are known to be less tax efficient, but because this is in a Roth IRA, where the taxes don't matter, and yet a LUN, they're in index funds, so that issue is not going to that big. Either way, it comes down to a personal preference on which one you would prefer, and if I'm even on a Brokerage that allows the index mutual fund in case you're interested to learn more about the different types of options if you're on Fidelity, you could look into the Fidelity Zero Fetal Market Fund that has the ticker FZ Rocks, which is relatively new compared to their original total market index fund with the ticker FSCX. Or say you're on Vanguard, you can then consider their VT Saxes, but just know they have a $3,000 minimum investment requirement. Or on Charles Schwab, you may be interested in Sweatsex. Now, these will track the total U.S. stock markets of. They are going to be very similar with slight differences where the Fidelity version FSX has a 0.015 cent expense ratio. The fund has a few more holdings now being at 3,839 holdings, and since this fund was created in 97, it has averaged an 8.94 cent annual returns, will be simply getting one total stock market index fund over time. Although past performance does not guarantee future results, averaging a 9 cent annual return could build up your Roth IRA extremely well over time, and that's safely in fact if you're at the age of 3. Right now, just getting started brand new to the Roth IRA FI, you invested only in this total stock market index fund to FI, you did $7,000 per year, which is the limit and equates to $583 per month. That means by the age of 60, when you're eligible, you could have nearly $1 million in the account. The last thing I'll mention, IRA extremely well over time, and that's safely in fact to FI, you're at the age of 30 right now. Just getting started 
brand new to the Roth IRA FI you invested only in this total stock market index, Fundify you did $7,000 per year, which is the limit and equates to $583 per month. That means by the age of 60 when you're eligible, you could have nearly $1 million in the account. The last thing I'll mention on shortly is that instead of one to total stock market index fund, you could instead invest into a small mid and large cap fund. I like this approach because I get to control how much of each one I own and I get to see how well each of them perform over time for ETFs. You could consider Vanguard small cap ticker VB mid cap ticker Van large cap, which is also referred to as the S&P 500. That is, though, please understand that VO and VD have an 87 cent overlap by weight between the two. So I, you don't need both of these in the same account. The holdings in both every similar and then non-fidelity, the ones I personally use are the small cap ticker FSX, the mid cap, which is the ticker FSMDX, and then the large cap, the ESP 500 index fund FX. But to keep things simplest, you could simply just get one total stock market index fund to give you broad exposure to the entire U.S. economy, all within one purchase. Moving on from the another index fund that I believe is a need in the Roth IRA is a large cap growth index fund. The best ETF options here consist of VUG and QQQ. We'll use SG example here, and the expense ratio for this fund is 0.4 percent. It tracks the total return of the Dow Jones U.S. large cap growth to tall stock market index. Understand that this consists of large cap comp. Anius they exhibit growth characteristics, where the easiest way to see how this works is by the top holdings in the fund that are Apple, NVIDIA, and Microsoft, similar to the total U.S. stock market, but now they contain much more weight, each being above 11 cent. You can also see that there's more weight toward the top sector, like 48 cent of Infotech. Then there's other ones that are like 30 cent consumer discretionary, many more. Thereafter, the biggest reason why this is a strong investment is not just the fact that it goes towards the growth investments, but a also that there are many different sectors over a 10, 20, 30, even 40 year horizon. It's going to adjust accordingly to the indexes that are doing the best, but the allocation towards growth allows you to have more opportunity to build wealth over time. In fact, CG has a achieved a 16.48 annual return over the past 10 years, and since it was created in 2009, the average is 16.36 per year, where if we look at QQ, which if you're curious, QQQM tracks the same index, but it's just a newer Chepper altern. A TIV, the fund tracks the NASDAQ 100 index that has beaten the S&P 508 out of the past 10 years. In fact, since it was created in 1999, the fund has outperformed the S&P 500 by 423 into total returns, becoming a comparison of 1-2 total growth compared to the S&P 500 at 579. So 10999 in this fund would now be worth $110,000, which does not include any additional contributions where with the same amount in the S&P 500 that would now be worth really 68000 Understand that a fund like Klingshesht only has 231 companies in this fund, so it is going to have more risk than if I you were to get one with thousands of companies, which if I are curious, the Fidelity version I use is FSPGN for Schwab. They have SSWLGX and Vanguard has VIG, Gleik as Ed. The difference between ETFs and index mutual funds is a personal preference. And it also depends on the brokerage that you're on, but for me being on Fidelity, I've started with their index mutual funds and I've always liked them since I've started, which I've stuck with, which I've stuck with to be completely transparent in all of my tech stable accounts. I use VO and I don't use any index mutual funds. And I would recommend that to anyone that asks, but because the Roth IRA is an account that you should not be touching for a long time, don't even plan on withdrawing the contributions. I know that UK and doth this without penalty completely free. But I do believe that a small to medium amount of a growth fund in this portfolio is well worth the risk for potentially growing your portfolio much more over time. You see, huge mistake that I learned about the Roth IRA is that if you have that many years until you're even going to touch the money and then slowly transition into stable investment. Right now, there's really no point of getting low growth. Alternatives like REIT T, dividend income funds, or even bond funds, in fact, I personally invested a small amount in bond funds to diversify the portfolio, but truly really does not matter because I'm not touching the funds and all it did was annoying because the bond fund only grew three cent where my growth fund was up 50 cent. So the overall motto I like to look at for the Roth IRA is look for the strongest yet safest investment stop provide their returns over time because of that the last one that's on my list that I believe is a need in the Roth IRA for additional exposure. Yet, I keep this at every small amount would be eat total international stocks, so to cover many different international stock, STS, the on. EI personally use on Fidelity is, but an ETF version you could buy anywhere would be VXS, but this fund has an 8 cent expense ratio and seeks to trek thefts global all cape excluding index, which measures all types of stocks outside of the United States, which includes developed and emerging markets. Now, this fund has 8,667 holdings, 
with the top one as being Taiwan Semiconductors and Samsung, where each one contains much lower weight. Toward the fund than the U.S. index funds with all their large cap tech stocks, you can also see the top regions in the fund include Europe at 40 cent and Pacific and emerging markets, both around 26 cent. And the reason that this has not been a popular alternative for investors, especially recently, is because over the past 10 years, it has averaged only a 5.43 cent annual return, which is obviously much lower than the first two index funds. But what's important to understand is that historically, there have been times where international stock has outperformed the U.S. and if things were to rotate soon, having a small portion could help your portfolio stay diversified and still see decent growth over time. Of course, Noon knows what the future holds. But the reason that I keep this to a small amount of my entire portfolio is because there are many U.S. companies that have operations and are generating revenue in international markets. For example, McDonald's has 14,000 locations in the U.S., but that's only one-third of all their locations as they have many others. It's in Japan, China, Germany, Canada, and many more you can also see for Nike, only a small share in the color blue is generated in North America, where the rest is international. So because U.S. stocks take up pretty much the entire world and have provided stronger returns throughout time, I prefer to have much more into those and only a small amount into international stocks. No, there are many other growth index funds that you could consider investing into. That is a complete personal choice. You have to do your own research, but above all, just understand that with the Roth IRA, you want to look for strong yet long term growth investments, which is exactly why I personally believe with the foundation of the Roth IRA being a total stock market index fund, large kept growth, and a small amount in international exposure, provides everything you need to successfully build wealth within the Roth IRA. If you're interested to see exactly how I allocate each of my investments, consider checking out my Patreon that I have linked in the description below. And if you want to see my strategy with the Roth IRA or the best growth ETF, to consider check out these videos right here. We shall also leave videos related to these in the description of this video. And as always, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, and notifications button for future content like this.